Hey, um, we are live. Yes, so excited. Um, thank you all for joining us. We're excited to share and show um, some things about um, multi-tenant organization before we get started. I do just have a few housekeeping things and then I'm gonna kind of go in the background and help. But a couple of things that I wanted to just share is yes, we are recording. Yes, we will post the recording for you all to share with folks who couldn't um, be here. And of course we will share the slides as well. So um, stay close. Thank you all so much for joining. If you do have questions during this um, webinar, we do have a Q&A option across the top in Teams. Feel free to post your questions in there. I know many of you, I, I recognize so many faces and so many names, um, and I know many of you have got lots of questions and chatter, so sometimes the chat gets a little unwieldy and we might miss something. So I'm happy to kind of um, take any questions as they come up to our lovely presenters, Audrey and Raj, who will introduce themselves and kind of give you an overview of what we're gonna share a little bit. And we also have some customers that are going to also share their experiences um, today as well. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, really appreciate you being here and showing up. And without further ado, I'm gonna change it um, and let Audrey and Raj introduce themselves and kick it off. All right. Hi everyone, um, I'm Audrey Hosford. I'm a senior product manager with Viva Engage. I'll have been with Microsoft three years as of this August, uh, counting the days to my three year anniversary. Um, this is so, so excited to be able to show you uh, what, what we're supporting in Viva Engage for multi-tenant organizations. Um, I work very closely with Raj on this effort. We've been working on this for over a year now. Um, I specifically own some of the leadership scenarios you'll see later on in this session um, around Leadership Corner and some of the features that are very tailored to leadership communications and crossing that tenant boundary, right, to get messages where they need to go. Raj? Hey, uh, good afternoon. Good morning, folks. Thank you all for joining. We really appreciate the opportunity to connect. Uh, uh, I think I've met several of you. Looking forward to meeting several of you today. Uh, I am part of the Viva Engage team as well, and uh, with Audrey, I, our focus is to basically enable some of the multi-tenant organizations. So, uh, been with the organization a little bit over three years, I would just say. I think I'll not, I'll not tell how many years because that'll just age me. But uh, moving along, uh, let's just uh, say that yeah, seen a few releases, uh, but excited to uh, share with you our. Uh, thinking, uh, you'll see a lot of stuff today, which is going to be actual working code. Fingers crossed we have our demo uh, things working with that. Uh, let's get started. All right. Uh, All right. So, for, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll take us through the agenda. Um, first, we'll be doing a quick overview of um, the multi tenant organization offering for Viva Engage, what our goals were, what our roadmap is going forward. Um, we'll, we'll have a couple of customers uh, share their experiences with MTO, have a couple conversations there. Then we'll dive into live code demonstrations and walkthroughs for our Storyline and Leadership Corner offering, which is currently generally available, has been for a while now. Um, we'll show MTO communities, which are in preview now, MTO campaigns, which are also in preview, and MTO Ask Me Anything events, which are coming to preview in June. And then, of course, we'll have time at the end for Q&A. All right. Um, I feel like with this audience, I probably don't need to do too deep of a dive into what we hear from multi-tenant customers. We know we've been hearing this for years now, right, with the separate tenant model, having multiple tenants in the Microsoftverse. Um, collaboration is required switching between tenants. Leaders can't easily communicate with all employees at the same time without a lot of repetitive effort, right? Uh, privacy standards are configured and maintained separately. And your security and compliance insights, your remediation, your policies, they have to be reviewed on a per tenant basis. It's just a lot of extra effort and extra upkeep to try and maintain the boundaries you need uh, to run to run your business successfully and securely. And we're, ho we're hoping to change that. We're hoping our offering can help smooth that out a little bit. Uh, so good news, multi-tenant capabilities across M365 are now generally available. Uh, you can find people across organizations easily with Microsoft 365 People Search. Streamline your workforce collaboration with the new Teams desktop client. Unlock new ways for employers and leaders to connect with Viva Engage. We'll do a deep dive on that in just a second. Um, you can manage incidents across tenants with Microsoft Defender XDR, and of course, simplify multi-tenant management overall with Microsoft Entra ID P1. 
So this is not just Engage. We Microsoft is going all in on MTO. So Viva Engage MTO specifically. Our goal was to bring together all employees in an organization, to connect with leaders and coworkers, to find answers to questions, to share their unique story, and to find belonging at work. This was you know, made extremely apparent, right, in the uh, the global events that, you know, separated us, isolated us for our own safety, uh, made it ever more important for us to connect as we are globally distributed um, in our work. So how do we do that? It's a lofty goal. How, do, how does Viva Engage MTO do that specifically? So we're enabling leaders to connect and communicate with all employees to set strategy, align efforts, share updates, all in one place. Employees across all tenants can participate in communities and leverage peers for employee resource groups or communities of craft, learning, shared interests, again, in one space. All employees can participate in network-wide campaigns to drive awareness of something at your organization. Leaders can host, invite, and include all employees across the MTO for live events or Ask Me Anything events. And finally, you can do all this. That's fantastic, right? But you also have MTO-aware analytics for leaders, communication, and campaign organizers to gain insights on engagement in all of those tenants for all of these features that we're bringing you. Or you can break it down. You can see it MTO, you know, across the MTO all up or filtered by tenant as you need. Um, and we have our roadmap here as well. These aren't just really lofty ideas. We've got some pretty, pretty awesome date commitments here. Um, Viva Engage MTO V1, as I said, became generally available in the last quarter of the last calendar year. That includes storylines that are available across all the tenants, bl a blended leadership corner experience where leaders from all tenants can be visible um, in the leadership corner, um, cross-tenant at mentions so that you can directly you know, include and notify someone that you want to call out in a cross-tenant storyline post or, or response, and cross-tenant analytic analytics, excuse me, for those storyline experiences. Um, in the first quarter of this calendar year, we brought uh, Viva Engage MTO V2 to, uh, to preview MTO campaigns and MTO communities. Um, we're hoping to have MTO campaigns and communities GA ready. Um, I want to say at the end of this quarter, Raj, we may be pushing those dates out a little bit as we, as we gather more information. And um, MTO AMAs will enter preview um, in Q3 now of this uh, of, of this calendar year. Um, and looking to the future, we will be planning for cross-tenant events hosted in Viva Engage, as well as cross-sell or cross-geo support. That, that means if you have tenants in the US and in the EU from a data stamp perspective, we can enable collaboration between them. It's not just between your US tenants only or between your EU-based tenants only. Okay. Next slide. Yeah. All right, so I don't know, Raj, if you want to lead this and then I'll kind of spotlight some of our customers so that folks can see them in the uh, webinar. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, it's, uh, so first of all, it's uh, really excited that you saw that Audrey shared about our uh, the investments that we are making and where we are on the roadmap. Uh, the fact is that, you know, our product is as good as our customers uh, wanting to use it and adopt it and roll it out. Um, I'll give a very quick uh, uh, intro about our first customer, Logicalis. We have Sarah Hunter and uh, on the call from Encocentric's uh, representative who are helping onboard, and Caleb is uh, representing Cocentric. Uh, we've been on this journey with uh, Viva Engage, MTO, uh, and other experiences of MTO log with Logicalis from very early days. So I really wanted to open up the opportunity for us to hear from Sarah and Caleb about their thinking, their journey, how they envision it. So without keeping uh, me talking, I'll turn it over to Sarah and uh, Caleb. Microphone on. That's a good idea. Yeah. Can everyone hear me? OK. Yes. Yeah, got you, Sarah. OK, excellent. Um, well, thank you to, to Raj um, and the team, and thank you for allowing us to um, talk to you today. Um, so just a brief introduction about Logicalis. So we are a leading global technology service provider. We have over seven and a half thousand employees worldwide. 
Um, we have just over 100 office locations in 30 territories um, covering the US, Latin and South America, EMEA and APAC. Um, and we deliver uh, managed services and solutions to over 10,000 customers. So over our 25 year history, we've um, acquired over 25 businesses as part of our ongoing globalization strategy. And, and obviously with that comes a whole host of legacy systems and platforms. And so the kind of the key challenge for us is we really needed um, a unified, accessible and easy way to to have and to utilize an internal communications platform um, that could unite all of our employees worldwide, ease collaboration, um, as well as providing a channel for messaging and for, for communications um, from senior execs at a global level to, to everybody worldwide. And, and I guess because of our close relationship with Microsoft, we um, arrived at the solution of using MTO um, for Viva Engage. So at the moment, we're currently in a, a phased rollout. Um, but of the regions who are fully onboarded, Viva Engage has been fully embraced um, using the, the range of many features, um, using the, the communities for various work stream collaborations, um, as well as some more kind of leisure based um, sort of communities, um, sort of not necessarily work related, you know, some kind of gardening clubs and book clubs as well. So it kind of really kind of is giving everybody a kind of a full rounded um, sort of communication usage. We have a really good example of when we launched Viva Engage in one of our regions, which also coincided with um, a new CEO who started for that region as well. And, um, and he fully embraced the, the launch of Viva Engage. And um, he actually um, introduced himself by using the, the video um, feature in the storyline. Um, in the storyline section and um, yeah it was a, just a really good way to introduce himself um, to launch the platform um, soliciting any kind of feedback and um, he generated great engagement with that post so I mean it's it's been a really kind of big success um, in, in that particular region. I would say other features that have been really popular are the um, are the question features, and one that's been used quite a lot is the the praise feature, which, which allows um, co-workers to really kind of give praise to to employees for you know work on a particular project, um, and just really kind of highlighting them. We also have a leadership corner, which allows um, sort of certain. Um, people who have been identified as leaders, um, there might be senior execs, um, there might be senior, ma senior managers, um, and that's been really successful in being able to communicate to everybody um, specific news updates um, or wellbeing announcements or signing up for particular workshops or new campaigns which are launching. So moving forward, um, I'm sort of really excited about the launch of global communities becoming available and um, and having the ability to set up channels for specific areas. Um, I, sit in, I sit in marketing. We always have a lot to say and a lot to communicate, um, but also looking at, at channels for HR and for well-being. And a really big one for us, which we're lo really looking forward to, is being able to facilitate global accessibility for our all hands or town halls. Um, and this has been a little bit of a challenge for us because we have some regions that don't necessarily have access to specific um, sort of video platforms. So you know, that's certainly a feature that's um, going to be really, really interesting. And another big one for me, um, sitting in digital marketing, is having the ability to dive into the analytics, um, see who's engaging with the content, who isn't, which can you know initiate a bit of a deep dive as to you know well, let's look at you know why 
why is the engagement not happening so much in that region and sort of being able to plan and communicate accordingly. So that's kind of a bit of an overview as to how our introduction to it at the moment and how we're using it. Um, so now I'll hand over to Caleb, who is from Cocentric, and he, him and his team have been very much involved in the, the planning and the management and the execution of the, um, of the Viva Engage rollout for Logicalis. Thank you. Over to you, okay. Caleb. Thank you, Sarah. I think that was an amazing overview of all the all the hard work that's gone on with with the Logicalis project as well. So thank you so much for taking us through that. Um, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Caleb. I'm joining you from the company called Cocentric, which I've strategically positioned myself. So you can see the uh, our logo behind us as well. Um, but we are um, Microsoft partners, so um, we've been working with the suite for a long time. And I think um, what's really impressed us about this journey we've been on with with kind of the MTO is I think it's the ability to be able to connect a whole organisation, as Sarah was was talking about. I think. The Logicalis example is so nice because it was um, a, a company split across so many different tenants. So I know Sarah and Raj kind of alluded to it, but the tenants are very different across lots of different locations. And I think when this project was started, there was definitely that want to make sure that whatever tool was picked was able to communicate across all of those tenants seamlessly. And I think with the MTO functionality, that's been something that we've been so impressed with. Um, from like an adoption launch point of view, I think one of the big things as well that I've been really kind of... Um, impressed and has really helped us take a really good approach is that you can take a very localized and global approach at the same time. So some of the examples that Sarah gave, for example, were very close and local to the UKI. Um, so there's a UK part of the business. They've launched brilliantly. And that was that great example about the CEO um, being on his first day. That was such a nice moment for everyone in the UK. Um, and it was something they were able to share locally and build kind of their own instance. But with the launch of the you know global uh, communities and stuff they're also able to not miss out on that huge kind of global communication piece and that's been really transformative for the business as well so we're really excited for when that piece of functionality launches to see how that can really transform but i think being able to take that local approach and make sure that each region feels like they've got kind of localized news makes it feel more personable i think to the end user it makes it feel less scary as well um quite often with these platforms if you're asking people to you know communicate straight away to thousands of people it can be quite daunting whereas in their local regions they can see the people they kind of have a, an idea of who's there they feel more comfortable communicating in there but they're not missing out on those key kind of global communications as well which is why i think um this is a real strength of the mto kind of process within within beaver engage um, I also just wanted to echo what Sarah said around Leadership Corner. Um, I think I'd just call this out as something that's been a, a crucial feature really throughout this, this launch period. I think especially um, as we've been kind of working with, with Raj and team who have been excellent um, on ensuring that we have access to um, global MTOs and communities when they become live. Um, Leadership Corner has been really transformative in ensuring that we can still cascade messaging at that level. Um, and we've seen great engagement across there as well. So I know um, Sarah and team have been using that to make sure that they can cascade messaging across from, from a marketing perspective. And I think that piece of functionality um, has really helped us pull the launch together and also feeds into ensuring that we can get that messaging across as well. Um, so yeah, I know, I know Raj, there's probably a few questions you want to throw to us as well, but we just want to give you an overview of kind of our experiences so far. Um, but yeah, we've been we've been really impressed with what we've seen. And I think it's it's been an amazing journey to be on and to be one of the first uh, launching it and working on it has been has been a real privilege. Thank you, Sarah and Caleb. I really appreciate you both sharing the journey and what are some of the scenarios that you're looking for. And it's always a good opportunity for us at Microsoft as well as uh, uh, like, you know, to hear from our customers like you know so my first question is to say love the fact that you're seeing all the opportunity that you have ahead with viva engage mtu and the other features a uh, couple of first questions first questions of two part part one what has been the biggest struggle that you had, exper had to experience setting this up like you know please please share it transparently like you know what has been the biggest struggle getting this going and or what are and the part two is like what are the challenges that you had in the absence of the MTO solution that you are seeing MTO address? So first, we want to hear your feedback to say what we can do better, and second, we want to hear from you how MTO is helping address some of your challenges that you had before MTO. Okay, um, I'll take the um the the first. Uh, the, uh, probably more the second question. I think, as I mentioned before, I think that the challenges before the MTO is that 
you know, we, there was nothing really that we had that we could really kind of unify um, everybody all together, you know, apart from, you know, we have email, you know, everyone has their own kind of localized version of, of Teams. Um, but as I say, you know, we, the, 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 each region has their own number of kind of own specific um, communication tools, but there was never one that kind of encompassed everybody all the time. So, you know, we, without having that, obviously we come to rely a little bit more on email, which has its kind of limitations. Um, so it's really having access to, um, you know, a, a sort of MTO, Viva Engage, gives us that whole kind of unified um, channel which, we, you know, we can have for communication. And I think probably Caleb might be, be best to um, yeah. answer the, the challenges given that he's been more at the front line of um, the sort of implementation and rollout. Yeah, of course, I could talk a little bit about um, some of the challenges. So um, one of them, and it, to be honest, it's probably not, um, it's probably less kind of specific to the products, but I think um, people data is always a challenge for some of these as well. So we kind of found initially that, feeding in that people data from, you know, um, Azure and stuff like that, there was some data cleanup that needed to be done. So I think that was both one um, through the data mapping. That was definitely one that I think there was a few um, few experiments early days around, you know, people being able to see leaders they shouldn't and stuff like that, which which is all kind of expected, I think, when when you're launching this kind of platform. But that was, that was a big challenge. Um, I think, Raj, to your kind of second question around um, what challenges have we seen maybe in lieu of like global communities, I think, um, it's definitely not quite possible yet for the average user, I would say, to kind of communicate at a global level. And I think that's something that we have had to rely. So, for example, I think um, Sarah um, kind of uh, in her team, they have someone who is a global leader um, and quite often have to push messages out as them, maybe instead of themselves, just to ensure that they get that reach. So I think that's something at the moment that we are maybe struggling with slightly without those um, kind of global communities being online. I think that that's something that we're really excited that when that does come online, um, we'll see that really transform how you know um, the more kind of ordinary users able to communicate across uh, across the community and really benefit from that from that global reach as well. Uh, thank you for sharing. I think this is uh, super insightful, and um, uh, we appreciate uh, you all being on this journey. Like you know, this is as you saw, like you know, we we engage MTO and the general MTSEG MTO uh, just rolled out. Uh, we appreciate as you have been giving feedback to help us make better. So our request is like all of our customers who are actually rolled it out, as well as who are in the process of previewing it, trying it out. We love all and every feedback, so please keep it going. Uh, once again, um, it's been a thrill to basically work with Logic Alice and uh, Cocentric as we have onboarded them to production. And I, I, I think they are in a vast enough tenants. We already heard the numbers that Sarah shared but they are so geographically distributed, like to get to 10 plus tenants working seamlessly, I think that gives us joy. And I appreciate you both joining us this morning and sharing it. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, if anybody else has any questions for Sarah or Caleb, please feel free to ask in Kim's Q&A or uh, anything. Alison, uh, back to you. We do have one question in the Q and A. Um, somebody was curious about Leadership Corner and how um, corporate comms was using that to communicate, and how you all are thinking about Leadership Corner. And then Adrian did join, so I am going to promote him, and we'll um, ask him a few uh, customer questions as well. So, um, yeah, Sarah, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about kind of the thought process with Leadership Corner. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, so as Caleb mentioned, um, yep, yeah, um, in marketing, we, um, our VP of marketing, um, Kat, she is, um, one of the, the leaders in leadership corner and, um, so she she's used it to um, to remind um, all of the teams and everybody else of kind of big kind of campaigns that we are launching, um, and you know we've obviously spoken to to the regions and everybody you kind of assume that everybody knows, but but the beauty of the um, of having a leadership corner is that you can. Um, put out um, a message as a leader, making sure that it, it reaches everybody 
but then you also have the added functionality of adding it as an, an announcement, which means that it will also feed into everybody's um, inbox um, as an email, which is a great kind of sort of catch all. Um, and it, it just kind of provides, um, you know, that kind of reach um, for, for certain messages um, that, that, that you just know will reach everybody. And, and likewise, we have our kind of um, responsible business leader um, who runs a lot of well-being workshops. And again, it's just a really great way to communicate to everybody that, you know, there's a, a, a workshop coming up on, you know, getting the best sleep or, you know, how to be the best employee, whatever. Um, so again, it, it just gives that reach um, to, to the certain leaders um, to, to put out that message and, and let it reach everybody. I was just, just going to add very quickly, if that's OK as well, on, on Leisure Corner, I totally echo what, what Sarah was saying. I think that we've um, taken a bit more of a, um, there's probably been a bit more content going through Leisure Corner than there would be in a normal rollout, I would say, just because we've been kind of waiting for the um, global uh, communities to come online. So there's definitely been some content that I think would naturally have fallen to global communities. So I think it'll be interesting to see as we start move, moving through the process, you know, we might write some guidelines and potential policy around when to post to a community as a leader versus when to post Leadership Corner. So I think that would be quite a, a nice thing to be able to specify as well. But I think, um, yeah, it's been really transformative. And those comms that have been going on that have been great to see so much traction, especially with kind of, you know, leaders picking up key initiatives and also introducing themselves to the business. Um, it's been it's been an excellent resource for that. Great. Thanks so much. Um, Raj, I don't know if we want to um, spend another couple minutes talking to Adrian and then you guys should still have plenty of time for demos. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, so Adrian, welcome. Thank you. I know. Um, Thanks, Raj. Uh, Adrian, um, it's a I'll I'll tell the quick story like you know we asked Adrian uh, late uh, Thursday and that is my bad I completely lapsed out on asking him earlier to say join us and he like he was gracious enough to say yes I would love to join thank you Adrian for joining and sharing your journey I know you are actually in the process of setting things up and rolling it out uh, so would love for you to share yourself like you know who you are what you're representing and your journey with MTO so far I know Nick is on the call as well, who is uh, from our uh, field team. Uh, so Nick and Nick and Adrian, Audrey and I partner together plenty. But let's just hear from Adrian and uh, would love to hear more about your experiences, Adrian. No worries. Thanks. Thanks, Raj. Yeah, I'm uh, well. I'm uh, Adrian Knight. I'm a uh, solution architect at uh, AB Foods, um, and uh, working on the project as Raj says, we're right in the thick of things, uh, getting getting it off the ground and. The initiative came to us um, from our procurement team. We're looking to improve the way that they collaborate um, across across the globe. AB Foods being a big uh, good one, global business of lots of different brands, and there's 150,000 employees, and yeah, across lots of countries, but also lots of tenants, which obviously is the, always a big challenge trying to get people to together. Um, so you know, so like uh, working with with Nick, the, uh, the from the business side, that the Viva Engage was sort of selected as the as the tool of choice um, that would obviously deliver what's needed to to instill that more sort of community um, and allow the um, you know the, the different parts of the business to sort of work together and feel more part of a, a single procurement function and uh, not just tied to their local businesses and, and sort of bring all that uh, sort of working together spirit together. Um, I, I guess where I've been brought in with is really building those uh, some of the, the, the technical infrastructure, uh, setting up MTO, MTO um, the cross tenant syncing. We're, we're spread this the scope of this work spreads us across twelve different tenants, um, which uh, we, we are in the process of of, of getting getting set up and uh, obviously looking forward to having the um, the communities that we could share across. across there as well we 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 do have probably half the business is actually in one tenant which which is quite helpful so so we are, we are able to set up and, and and test and work with our internal champions uh on on building this um but yeah but at the moment we're we're at the very early stage we're looking to to go live we're launching in june to sort of the first phase of the business we've got an event uh, that'll be run in uh, in warwick where we're, we're we're flying in a lot of people to, to have a big big sort of kick of event to sort of get get everybody on board and uh, and, and using viva engage 
Um, so yeah, everyone's uh, really, really excited about that. And um, yeah, I would say so far, we I think we it's been business has been a little reluctant. We were from a, a, a IT view where a lot of this is very new. I think a lot of IT folks are always a little bit skeptical when new functionality comes along and making sure it's really well bedded in. But we've been pushing forward and the yeah, Rajan team have been a great support, making sure that we've <laughs> we, we've kept everybody on on side. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, yeah, we're, we're I think heading in the right direction. We've got a, got a challenging month this month to get everybody uh, sort of set up and the, the testing underway. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's been uh, been great. Yeah, I don't know, Nick, if there's anything else. I know you were probably involved before I was with the initial um, sort of uh, sort of step down selecting Viva Engage. So I don't know if there's anything you'd, you can add. I think what you've touched on was really key, right? You've got lots of different organizations, lots of different brands that have kind of acted as individual entities. And even though you've got 50% on one tenant, you didn't want them to feel excluded, right? Like you've got a procurement yeah. team of hundreds of people across those different tenants. So bringing them together, connecting them, that was that was such a key focus. So no, you've, you've done amazing at kind of getting that moving so quickly. Yeah, no worries, thank you. Yeah, no, and that's been one of the key things. There's been this big concern. That's why the MTO is great, is where we're bringing in so people can all be seen as members and not added as guests and having that limited functionality, as you uh, mentioned, like leadership corner and things is something they're very keen to use. Um, and of course, you know, adding people as guests, that that obviously won't work. So yeah, we need to get everybody, um, you know, all brought together so they're all you know, treated as one and, and can you have all that sort of equal voice across the, across the platform. So yeah, it's uh, yes, go, go, go. Ooh, I say all going well. We haven't launched yet, but yeah, so far <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's uh, heading in the right direction. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. One last question. I know we are in the uh, bits of it. Uh, if you can give us a share size, you don't have to disclose full numbers, but share size of how many your global reach that you have with uh, when you say global reach like how many tenants are you talking about that you want to connect yes yeah, so i think in total there's about 17 tenants in in total um and and, and i also see this as something that's going to grow because i think once the procurement team are using this um you know other parts of the business and, and there are certainly pockets of the business that are already using um using Viva Engage and with people that use Yammer before. So the, there is a community, I believe, from looking at, there's about 17,000 people already using uh, Viva Engage um, in L L parts of the business, uh, but not obviously cross-tenant at the moment. So I think, yeah, getting this uh, working is going to be a yeah, really big a big step forward. And as I say, our global reach is about 150,000 employees. So if we do get it all working to the whole company in the in the long term, it'll be, uh, it'll be great. Yeah. Thank you, Adrian. I know, uh, uh, it, like, you know, you have, we've been, as you said, we have been proactively trying to keep on working through the details. So appreciate your patience, like, you know, uh, and Nick has been a great support on the field, trying to help us get things moving. Uh, any last thoughts that you would like to add in terms of uh, where you want to take this uh, once your procurement session is done? Like, where does it go? Wow. Like we, you touched upon communities and you talk, touched upon the leadership aspects of it, Adrian. Anything that you see as the grand vision of where you want to see MTO go? Yeah, no, I think that and the, the the campaigns and just being able to sort of grow grow the different communities across the across the board. Really, um, I think the leadership element is is probably one of the ones that is key is getting that engagement across the leadership, whereas that's something that's very hard to do over Teams and email today. So yeah, I think probably for us, getting leadership corner is going to be probably the priority to get that get that working. Excellent. Once again, thank you, Adrian, um, Sarah, Caleb, for really talking to us, like I mentioned in the beginning, when we started to talk to our customers. It's one thing for Microsoft to keep telling what we are building but it really is super valuable for us to hear from our customers who are adopting it, because that really is the litmus test for all of us to say, is it really delivering on the promise that we have set to set? So thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, I'll turn it over to Audrey, because we have, now we're gonna go into what we call as, hopefully our environment stands up and the demo gods don't show up. Uh, so we're going to go through a breeze of demos. So I'll turn it over to Audrey. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, um, I'm going to need someone to say yes or no. If they can see my screen, you should be seeing a Viva Engage uh, pr user profile page, MTO yes. crew. Yes. Yep. Fantastic. All right, so here I am. I'm in Viva Engage. I'm in our test tenant. Um, 
I am not myself. I am MTO crew. Um, I'm in what we call our hub tenant, engage DF hub. I'm spelling this out because you'll see we want to be very, very transparent with you about about these messages and these interactions truly crossing the tenant boundary. There's no smoke and mirrors here. So I'm a leader. MTO crew is a leader in this engage DF hub tenant. And I can go ahead and create a message and let folks know, you know, the Viva Engage MTO webinar is live now. Thank you. Um, if I want to go ahead and tag some folks like Raj or go ahead and tag myself, why not? I deserve a little pat on the back. Um, you see, we have tenant badges here for users in the at mention process. When we go to compose this message, I can tag. I'm in the era tenant. Audrey Hosford is a user in the era tenant. Raj is a user in the era tenant. And I know this. Aditi is a user in the intelligence tenant. This is badged here. So I know. I know which user I'm looking for and which tenant they reside in. Um, if I want to give a shout out, I'll give myself a shout out. Why not? You all can watch. Um, but that's not all I can do. I can also add a little rich media. Um, if For those who are familiar with Viva Engage and its storyline functionality, this may seem a little old news. Like, yeah, yeah, I can do that in single tenant. No, of course you can. It's just that you can do it in multi-tenant as well. I can go ahead and add an image here. Oh, demo gods are not with us. But you can. Um, so I've gone ahead and created a quick message. I can go ahead and change my options for making this into an announcement. Why an announcement? That's the storyline post type that goes and creates notifications for everyone in your audience, everyone you're targeting to see this post so they don't miss it. And I want to make sure that it goes to everyone I want it to go to, right? I could send it to everyone in my tenant, same old, same old, or I could send it, I could notify everyone in the MTO, everyone in Engage Hub and the five other tenants that are linked here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't need to go ahead and, and give them the the, te the bell and teams, though I could. I'm just going to keep it to inbox for now. I don't want to disrupt everyone too much. And with that, the post is live. One posting location, one post experience. Um, Raj, do you want to show re receipt of, of, the, of that notification? Yeah, let's do that. I think what we wanted to show you is the experience that uh, uh, it spoke tenant user is going to have as well. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and uh, show you what my experience is. Give me just one second. I'll take over. So uh, we'll go a little bit just to make sure that we are showing you the full breadth of it. We will go back and forth a little bit. So it, it may feel a bit of a disruption, but we wanted to show you the full breadth of what users in tenants are going to see. So I'm going to actually just share my screen and you will see uh, uh, just share my screen and you will see that now I'm in the spoke tenant. I'm logged in as Raj, as you can all see. So I'm going about my business as usual. And if I were to come here to my inbox, I see there is an announcement that has come just now from uh, 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 MTO crew. And I can see that it has got the label called Engage Hub next to it. But imagine if I was in Outlook and I was just going about my business, checking my email here. Again, I'm logged in as myself in a different tenant, and I can see this Outlook notification that has just come in. And it's a rich notification, as you can see. It's a rich notification in the sense that I can like from here. I can actually comment from here. I can say that is an awesome milestone. And I can actually go ahead and include even gifts. So it is almost feels like uh, just make just make sure that I add a gift to say awesome. And let me just go ahead and add my favorite minions gift that I love to include. So I'm going to do a post and I have done this post, right? So now uh, this is done. I'm interacting, but just to show you what the experience is like you heard uh, both Sarah, Caleb, and Adrian talk about the leadership experience. So I'm in the spoke tenant, and you can see that in the leadership corner, I'm actually getting this feed from a leader from the hub tenant, and I can see this experience in the same experience, and my updates are coming through as well. But if I were to go and say that I wanted to actually click on the MTO crew, I can click on the storyline page as well, and it actually shows me their storyline page that they have been doing the post for, even though I am in a different tenant. So three things happen. One, I'm in my tenant going about my way of interaction. 
Second, I don't have any loss in productivity or change in context because I didn't have to do a network switch, which otherwise you would have to do. And third, I can clearly interact freely and I can know where the content is coming from. And the most important thing is you don't see any reference of external or guest in this experience because that was so key for us to make sure that we create that sense of belonging. I know there's been a little bit of a discussion on the chat to say when we get it for Teams. The Teams team is also working on making sure that you can use your custom labels and it should be available very shortly. I'll switch it back to Audrey to continue with our demo. Back to you, Audrey. Yep. Just getting it to load up. All right, uh, so I'm here. I'm back here. I'm the MTO crew. I'm on my story link page. I've scrolled down to something older because I want to show folks it's not just, again, it's not just about the seamless interaction. It's not just about not having to context switch. It's also about the analytics and insights your leaders can get from these you know, from this kind of feature. So I'm going to an older announcement so that I can show you some of the analytics that come with this. So let me go to this announcement and let me view the analytics for it. You can do this on a per conversation basis. So you can compare, you know, post by post, announcement by announcement. How is it doing? How are folks engaging with it? Um, and I can get the conversation analytics for this particular post. I can see the people reached, how many followers were reached, how you know, what percentage of my audience engaged, the trends in the conversation, what platforms, you know, folks are using to access it. The reactions we're seeing, the top comments, again, with the badge differentiating the source of the comment. And this is all up, right? It's all up by default across all of the tenants in my MTO. But I might not want that. Maybe I'm in a mergers and acquisitions scenario. I've just recently acquired an organization. I want to see how they're doing with that merger, how they're doing with you know the culture adjustment and how they're feeling about what I'm saying. So I can do a per tenant breakdown of all of this information as well. All of the users from the intelligence tenant who saw this post, who interacted with this post, all the users from the era tenant who saw the post, who interacted with it. I can do this really as I need it, right? Whether it's all up or on a per tenant breakdown. And I can do this for every storyline announcement I make. And with that, that is our storylines and leadership corner MT experiences, those are generally available today. Now, I think we want to move on to campaigns, Raj, is that right? Yes, let's go through campaigns and then we'll wrap it up with some of the other stuff that we have. Sure. So we've shown you storylines, we've shown you storyline announcements. They're a great way to have this, you know, user-driven, person-driven communication and to get information out there as you need it. But Sometimes you need a little more than that. You don't need just one post, right, that, that gets your message across. You don't want just one announcement, one set of notifications. Maybe you want something like a campaign. So what is a campaign? I'm going to multitask a little bit here because I need to create the campaign and also explain it to you. A campaign it really is it's a Viva Engage post, whether that's a storyline post or a community post that has... Um, a campaign hashtag. That campaign hashtag defines the campaign. It's an aggregator. It's a stamp. It's a, all the posts featuring this hashtag. They belong to this campaign. That's how we drive awareness. You might have something like a giving campaign, right, for a time of the year when you encourage employees uh, to, you know, give charitable donations or donate their time to a cause or to drive awareness of a new company initiative. Um, that's what campaigns are really for. It's you know to to take that power of the community posts or the storyline posts and supercharge them and collect this information in a central space by using the hashtag, organizing it and stamping it in that way. I'm going to call this campaign Give 2024 Give a campaign for a webinar. And I want to make sure I allow participation from all of the tenants in my MTO. We wanted to be very careful with features like this. Not everything should be MTO by default. Some things really are only meant right to be you know, shared in one tenant or you know, want to drive awareness, not all over the place, maybe in a, in, a, in a local sense in one tenant or two tenants. So we allow you to opt in, right? Yes, let's go ahead and make this um, an MTO campaign. I can add co-organizers if I want to. Not really feeling that at the moment, to be honest with you. And by default, um, when folks want to add to the campaign, we'll make sure it's a discussion. Uh, we, it doesn't need to be praise or poll. We can we'll start with a discussion, and we'll go with we'll go with a nice teal. 
for the campaign color. So now I can go ahead and publish this campaign. Anyone in the MTO can see it. And if I wanted to kick the campaign off on this page, see it already preloads the campaign hashtag so that folks know it's part of this broader campaign. I could say, let's kick this off. And you can see I can combine the power of the MTO announcement and that of the campaign. I could send this campaign kickoff post, notify everyone, disturb, you know, disturb them right in their flow of work and say, everyone, pay attention, join this campaign, share your awareness, share your experiences um, you know, with our Give, Give 2024 campaign and go ahead and send that right out. And now as you know, folks across the MTO get this notification that I've made this announcement that I've kicked off this campaign, they can go start making posts of their own. They can go start making storyline posts and community posts of their own, sharing their Give 2024 experiences, contributions, plans. And then as those posts trickle in, right, as they keep using this hashtag, this, this campaign feed updates. It updates and starts showing me the participation in the campaign so that I can see how, you know, how folks are engaging. And then there are analytics associated with that campaign as well that are coming. So that I can, under, again, understand in a deeper way how the folks in the MTO are participating in the campaign. Yeah, so uh, just like uh, we did this for MTO campaign, as Audrey had set up, she set it up as a MTO campaign. So that means that this campaign should be visible and accessible by Spoke users as well. So let us actually take a look in terms of what is my experience on the error tenant? So I'll just quickly switch over. Uh, I'm in my, I'll just quickly go and share my screen again. Um, so if you can come through here, you can see I'm in the leadership corner and right there in the leadership corner, I can see the MTO Cruise storyline with the GIF 2024. And I can click on the GIF 2024 and I can start seeing this particular campaign feed myself. And I can see what other users in my tenant are using and also what users in, in the hub are talking about. So I'm getting a full picture of a feed. But what if I were to actually use this campaign? Can I basically go ahead and use this campaign myself? in my own storyline, in my own tenant. So let's give it a try. So let me just go and say give, oh, I see give 2024. And I can see the green check mark as well next to uh, it as well. So I can actually just go ahead and make it. Uh, I won't make an announcement. I'll just make it a post. Uh, why I give? Um, because I know that it will make a difference in someone's life and i can include a gif just like we have in other posts it's just like a storyline post that i'm making so i'm actually just going to find a heart uh, over here and include that gif and i can just go ahead and include that heart and uh, include this gif and i can just do a quick post of this announcement finger crossed it works uh, and I think it does. Now, if I were to go to Give 2024, not only do I see the campaign that I have used, but I also see what uh, I saw from the hub as well. So now if I were to switch back to Audrey, uh, she should be able to tell us more about how the campaign experience will work. Yes, let me take control back. So here I am in the campaign feed. Um, seeing our analytics, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think the analytics part and the uh, hub admins or hub corp communicators being able to see the mm -hmm. full campaign feed engagement is coming shortly. Yes, that's uh, right. What we have enabled right now is the ability to publish and use the campaigns across the tenants and start creating those experiences. It becomes really powerful when you can actually have a global campaign, as you heard from Sarah. And also I know that uh, Devin from uh, Cox Communication was also sharing as so she sees the power of 
how MTO campaigns can benefit uh, the experiences. All right, uh, we are getting a bit close to time, so we want to actually, we have so many demos, a uh, couple of more demos to actually show. So I'm actually just going to quickly talk about the other thing uh, that we have in the works, and it is going to come to preview very shortly, as quick, as early as next month, and that is going to be our Ask Me Anything experience. So uh, before I go to a demo, I just wanted to spend about 30 seconds to give you. So Ask Me Anything is a very powerful tool in our event strategy. It is basically the way for leaders especially to basically set up Ask Me Anything where they can actually have this asynchronous way of collecting uh, feedback or questions that employees have on their mind. And they are usually used in conjunction with an event. Like, you know, for example, at Microsoft, uh, we are customer zero and we are very proud of saying that, you know, AMAs with Town Hall is a very powerful combination. So Rajesh Cha, who is our president for the Experience Plus Devices team, where we roll up to, he does a town hall uh, with 50,000 plus employees. And him and his leadership team and his core communication team set up this AMA about a week in advance to collect these questions. And during the town hall, the most upvoted questions get to be asked. So it basically has the transparency level to say, we are going to address, we're going to discuss what is top of mind for employees. Now with MTO AMAs, this reach goes beyond just your tenant and actually can go across all the boundaries. So let me just quickly show you how you can set it up. So back to my demos. Um, so I'm basically going to go back to, uh, I'm going to switch roles a little bit. So I'm going to be MTO crew now, I'll be in the hub. So give you a quick uh, sense. So I'm in MTO hub, I am, I'm in my storylines, I'm in my, like, you know, I can go to MTO crew and I can actually just go ahead and you can see my screen that I can create an AMA. So first of all, ask me anything can be created. So I'm going to say, uh, ask me anything about, I can't spell very well about uh, Viva Engage MTO MTO. Right. I can actually set a time. So I can say let this run for two days. Let it expire at 4 p.m. on Friday. So I'm going to just set 4 p.m. And I can actually add some details. MTO's evolution. And I can actually see that. Okay. Now I can actually set the uh, participation from all the tenants. So you can see this toggle is on. I can turn it on. And I think I can just go ahead and say, if I wanted to, there are other features, but I can actually say Teams notification for new questions. I'm actually gonna support Ask Anonymous questions as well. And I'm gonna just go ahead and create it. Now that it has been created, the experience is that any user, not only within my tenant, that is in the Engage Hub, but users across all tenants should be able to see this Ask Me Anything. So here we'll, do a little bit of a role reversal, and Audrey is going to be the ERA tenant to see what her experience is about the MTO AMA. Oh, um, give me just a second. Uh, I can quickly switch over, Audrey, just for the sake of time. Yeah. To be fair, I think your guys' uh, demo gymnastics has been fantastic. <laughs> it has gone more smoothly than I would have anticipated. So kudos to you. Thank you so much for doing the demo. Um, I really appreciate it. <laughs> you guys have definitely been doing some gymnastics to get this all to show up. So yeah. thank you. So as I was saying, uh, you can see my screen. So I'm back in the tenant as Raj. And you can see that I am now seeing there is an upcoming AMA from a leader uh, and I can click on it and I can start asking a question. So Raj is going to ask a question to say, is it true that we have MTO communities in preview? And I can ask that question. I know it is mostly a leading question. I can make it to be anonymous just to keep a little bit of a secret, but you know, let the world know it is there. And as is always, as it always mandatory, I'm actually just going to add my customary GIF and I'm going to ask this question. So now this question, oh, okay. Some of your attachment did not get attached, but at least the question did get posted. And you can see it's a real time update. So if I were to come here, 
I'm in this and I can see this question. I can actually just go ahead and upload this and I can actually respond to this question to say that is true. Uh, if you wait a minute, I can show you MTO communities in is live and well. And I can post it. And it is done. So now what the power is like, you can actually see that now there is this engagement. If I were to go click on this one new message, I think I'm seeing that there was an upvote to this question. There was one new comment over here and I can see that Audrey from another tenant is also basically saying it better be true. So you're seeing the power of being able to upvote and discuss uh, all those experiences. So uh, in the interest of time, because we have a couple of minutes, we wanted to keep MTO communities in the as one of the things that we wanted to quickly wrap up with. Really excited to say that MTO communities is starting to roll out to our customers uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours. All our customers who have expressed that they want to have MTO communities will be rolling out to them. Really, it's a testament to the team that we have been able to do it. So let's see how it works. So first of all, you can take any community in the hub and as an engage admin, you will now have the ability to basically market to be available for everyone. So here I'm an engage admin. I can just go ahead and say mark visible to all organization. There's a confirmation that comes in and I'm going to hit confirm. And now that I have confirmed it, it becomes an MTO community. Uh, let the spinning. OK, uh, something is OK. Hopefully it is done. Yeah. Now if I hover over it, you can see that Anyone in Engage Hub era smile can see it, but the power that really starts to come through is when I actually want to start adding users. So I know that Michael is on the call and I want to make sure that Michael Thomas can actually get added to this community. So I'm actually just going to make Michael a member and actually let me just go ahead and uh, add mention. So let me just go ahead, make a question to say and ask a question to say, is MTO communities uh, ready for preview? I'm going to ask this question and you can see that I'm able to see some of the related questions come through. I can actually just hide it and I can even ask to say, hey, add more details, asking at Michael Thomas. So I can see the same experience of at mentioning a user from the other tenant and I can actually go ahead and add, add topics, but for the interest of time, I'm just going to ask this question and hit post. Now, if Michael is on the call, I'm pretty sure that he might be actually be able to see this question and answer, but let me see what is Raj's experience in the, in the spoke tenant. Uh, Raj has basically been informed that, hey, there is this whole new um, um, uh, tenant uh, MTO community that he should be joining. I see Allison hand is up. She is probably saying we should wrap up, but real quickly, I can see that AI for product managers is available. I can see it come up. I can hit join. And once I join, you can see it shows up in the left nav. But in the interest of time, I'm going to quickly wrap up, stop presenting, and basically say that uh, it actually allows us to discover these users uh, into the community and start showing them. Um, I know it was a whirlwind tour. Uh, in 30 minutes or 60 minutes, we went, we covered a lot. I'll turn it back over to Allison if she has any closing remarks. Great. Um, there was one question in the chat. If you guys can answer that, I think Hank is asking about the community can only be done on the hub tenant. Um, and then um, if you would all just um, share how folks can get more information and how they can learn more and who they should be working with to kind of take the next step with MTO, that would be great. And then uh, for the rest of you, thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate you. Thanks um, for the customers for sharing their experiences and their perspectives, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, ciao. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.